This is Jason Avant, and this is the Q&A show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're coming um, to you guys on Inside the Birds platform, YouTube channel. I have my main man, my man, Quentin Michael. Say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Back at it again, <laughs> man. <laughs> we are it. back at it. We are back at it again. Um, I'm a little bit happier th today, even though, you know, we lost this weekend, this past weekend. The offense did a little bit better. Defense still looks abysmal. But before we get into all of that, let's thank everyone at Inside the Birds. I want to say thank you to Jeff, to Adam, to Hunter, to Josh, to everyone that's responsible for the Q&A podcast or the Q&A show. I um, want to say thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure that you tune in um, Inside the Birds YouTube channel, Amazon Music, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. Also, Make sure that you send your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Again, inside the birds at gmail.com. Um, we lost a close game. It wasn't really a close game. We <laughs> lost the game this week to um, the two time Super Bowl, um, I guess, attendees, uh, Kansas <laughs> City Chiefs, one Super Bowl, won one Super Bowl, lost the second one. Um, but they're a formidable team. They're always going to be at the top, they're always going to be at the end. And we stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with them for about uh, two and a half quarters. And then they kind of pounced on us. Q, let's talk about it. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts' performance. Let's talk about his evaluation, how he looked to you. Um, we know that he didn't play well at all versus the Cowboys. Do you think this was a bounce-back game for him? Um, <clears throat> I think you can say that. I think, I think he, played, um, he played much more poised. Um, he, he made better decisions. Um, looked like he, he threw the ball well, threw the ball on time. I mean, he, he finished, you know, 32 of 48. 48, 48 passes is, is a lot. tremendous amount of passes for a young quarterback it, it, it going against a defense like this. Now, we know their mm -hmm. defense um, isn't up to what they have been in the past, but it's still yeah. an aggressive defense that knows how to take advantage of young quarterbacks. But, um, you know, two, two touchdown passes, um, you know, 387 yards. Um, eight carries on 47 yards. So it was it was a it, against a regular team, um, you know, without an offense as explosive as the Chiefs. I think, um, you know, we definitely would win that game. So I I don't have any faults with him. I think he played better. I think our red zone game, our red zone um, completion rate needs to, yeah. to get better. Um, he's got to be a little bit more accurate in a couple of those throws, especially early in the game. And then um, we, you know, we fix those things and we'll be all right. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> I, I I agree with that. Um, I thought that he played pretty good. Yeah, a lot of people that are saying that he played, you know, a really really good game. I'm always leery of saying a guy is playing a you know a great game, especially like when you know you're going to get an extra hundred yards at the end of the game in garbage time, yeah. or just <laughs> throwing balls down the field because you're losing. Um, but I thought that he made good decisions most of the day. He threw a few bad passes, but most of them he re he was on time. And I, you got to credit that to Nick Sirianni in his first 15. It was clearly to get him in the rhythm and to get comfortable without many down the field throws to start off. A lot of screens, um, a lot of short passes, some RPOs um, mixed in with a few runs here and there, um, even by him. Um, I thought this was the perfect game plan of how to start most games. And you got to start the game with a young quarterback like 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 Jalen by, by getting completions. And a lot of these completions were at the line of scrimmage, right? They were out to Devontae Smith. They were out to Jalen Rager or Quez Watkins right away. The first two drives were up and down the field because they were just getting yards after the catch. Now, let's consider who the – who the, the Eagles were playing, we're talking about like a bad, really bad defense. The the Chiefs was as yeah. bad as, uh, as as we are on defense right now. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, they made it look pretty easy going up and down the field. They struggled in the red zone. And, um, and, and this is where we can kind of segue a little bit. Let's think about this. All right. So the red zone is where the Eagles struggled a bunch, Q. Mm -hmm. And let me read this off to you. Ertz overthrow, wide open touchdown. Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts midseason. Right? Greg Ward drop. Q8. Was it a tough play? It was a very tough play, but it's a very catchable play. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's something that, that um, Jalen has to, to put that on him. He has so much separation. Just put it on him. You don't have to be perfect. If the guy was right next to him, maybe that throw, but just put it on his body. He doesn't have to be perfect. He, he was open. He was wide open. So, yeah. but, but Greg still has to come down with that, even though I think that Jalen could give him a better ball. Um, the pick, the pick play. Which was not a pick play by yes, it for was. goodness sake. <laughs> he didn't even touch his, the guy that 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 was running the hump, right? So you offensive, I, I, you offensive dude, players. That man. was not a pick play. Look, a we, pick we've play. seen pick plays. We've seen where the guy runs right into the dude. Like you now, know, you now, know. Now JJ has to do a better job of 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 making Selling. it look like he's running a route, but he did not touch the actual person that he was supposed to pick. That, that is a pick. That's the it's a perfect example. So the only, to me, like I saw, the, to me, the only thing that, that the reason why that play was called was because if, you know, as a receiver, and these are the little things that you pick up as you, yeah. as you, you know, play the game and you get around vets is all he has to do is turn to the quarterback and put his hands out right here. Yeah, That's all he, he did his do. job by holding that guy off, and he just turns around and, look, and looks for the quarterback. That's yeah. You're right. You're right. He could have executed a lot better. I'm saying the person that he was going to pick, he did not touch. So how is it a pick play? He didn't. The, it's Ertz's man. Listen, man, I'm a defender. I'll never agree. To me, that's that's always a penalty. All right. Well, that's BS Even if right it's there. against the birds. All right. All right. All right. All right. We'll give you that one. But to me, that was that was BS. But they a better executed play that should have been a, a stand, right? So that's three yeah. plays right there that the Eagles messed yeah. up. And then the Devontae Smith push out. Yeah. Oh right. So these are all touchdowns. That's four touchdowns that we've could have. This game could have been so much different yeah. if we complete two of those, let alone four of them. Yeah. You know, so the game changes like that very quickly. And I'm going to talk about the red zone. And you got to talk about the red zone because the red zone is where we struggle. Um, it's where we struggle. But I think that. We get so conscious as coaches. I was a coach and I was a player, both of red zone offense. So there's red zone plays that are just um, uh, specifically designed for the red zone. And everyone do, does away with what got them down to the red zone. Yes. And I think that you should run your base offense until you get inside the 10. That's just me. That's the way I think about it. Yeah. Like, I know you can't run circle post and I know you can't run deep post and all those things but that little quick stuff that you were doing that stuff is good in the red zone too yeah yeah so why so so I deviate from that so those are the things to me that we can we can kind of grow upon like our offense was moving the ball down the field let's continue to do some of those things and when we did score touchdowns Kenny Kenny Gainwell was a little screen back. It was little passes in, in inside the red zone. That was the quick stuff. We got to continue to, to 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 expand upon our quick passing game, screen game, um, short intermediate passes, those types of things. That's what Ertz is is, is connecting on. Yeah. Um and uh, Hertz is connecting on. And 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 what you're what you're saying to me is, you know, when you get in in the in the red zone, that stop trying to be cute. Like it's it's really kind of the same thing that goes back to game one, you know, with the with the Philly special stuff. Like, just take what the defense gives you, right? Yeah. It's okay. It's okay to run the ball. I'm always going to say that. But it's okay to to just throw a regular screen, regular slant. You know, that those work as well. And yes. you, you can't get away from it, especially in the red zone, because everything is so condensed. And we've talked about this before. The, the field gets so much smaller. The, the passing game is more horizontal. It's not – it's not a vertical passing game. So it's harder. It's hard to get open. And yeah. that's where you have to use those quick passes, you know, the, the the slants, the quick screen, stuff like that. So I agree with you 100% there. You said it best. You still got to run the football. And yeah. this is this is, this is is the stat that I still don't like. We come off three rushes against the Cowboys. This game, we have 11, 10 by your running backs. How do you th- – th- this is not winning football. Mm-mm. You can't win games like this. Yeah. You just can't. Right? So we play we we've played two full games of football. <laughs> and our running backs have 13 13 carries in two games. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Like 
What do we like? What I didn't even, I'm not making this up. I'm looking at it right here with everybody else. Like, I know you're you're telling me, or you're trying to sell me some BS, telling me that you know um, the RPO game is an extension of the like. <laughs> hey, listen, it's not these not. guys need the ball. They need yeah. the ball too. You got a young quarterback. Take some pressure off of him. Relieve him a little bit. Get yeah. get it off of him. Let the other t the, the team – game was running strong, even when he's catching it, you know, screens and stuff. Miles yeah. Sanders is running strong. They want the ball. Yeah. Guess what? The offensive line would love an opportunity to hit somebody else back. Oh, yeah. Because they receiving – when they pass block, and they receiving it all. <laughs> Give them a chance to get to, – to, to, to be on offense. Yeah. So, um, that's something, Q, we definitely have to – um, change before this season, uh, but you know, before before we can get consistent on offense and before we can start winning some games, uh, this is something that, that needs to be addressed by the coaching staff, right? We're playing some formidable opponents. Cowboys is looking great. Um, I'm looking like you know Nostradamus here a couple of years <laughs> ago, and I when I told everybody, man, the Eagles should have drafted Trayvon Diggs. He's the best player in the second round, and I probably would. I told him I would have drafted him in the first round. And seeing what this this young man is doing with these picks, and 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 that's that's my thing. I'm a, I'm a high productive on defense. The guys that I love are guys that turn the ball over. That's just yeah. me. I'm an Ed Reed fan. I'm an Asante Samuel fan. I'm a Trayvon Diggs fan. I know he's a Cowboys, and people will hate me saying that. Is that you need players like that on your team to dog on, um, you know, get the ball back. Now let's yeah. get back to let's get back to our team. And when and, and and I was saying all that. I know we're playing some formidable defense. Um, the Cowboys had a good defense and playing some 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 formidable opponents with the Chiefs and with the Cowboys. Now we got the Panthers that are coming <laughs> that just lost to the Cowboys. Um, we got to run the football. Ultimately, yeah. got to run football. Absolutely. Yep. Um, next thing we'll get to, <laughs> tight ends. All right. Tight end play. Ertz is getting a lot of burn. Getting a lot of burn. Yeah. Do you think that it's holding Goddard back? That's, that's a tough one, that's, right? That's a, it really is because – you got so it's it's tough. Yeah. You got two really good tight mm -hmm. ends, okay, and you got you got Hertz who's who's still playing at a high level. He's still able to to, to make some plays in the passing game. But you got the mm -hmm. young, the young you know, budding star in, in Dallas, and it, I don't. It's I can't put my finger on what's going on there. Like I don't. Goddard Goddard definitely can take over at that that one spot, but it, it almost seems like the Eagles are hesitant to make that move. Um, and and really put Dallas in that number one spot, and I don't really understand what's going on there. Like it's, um, I don't know. It's it's a really weird dynamic going on right there, and um, it's hard for me to get a, a kind of a feel for what's what's happening there. I mean, uh, it's almost I'm like with you. it's almost like they 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 like they like Goddard, but they trust him more in the protection game. And they don't trust Ertz as much in a, in a protection game. So by default, you know, it's almost like Dallas is, you know, what they say, what nice guys finish last. Like he's he's being relegated to being a blocker right now when he really should be the number one guy in, in the passing game. Because, I, I listen, I love Ertz. I think he's a, a fantastic tight end. And he still has a lot of, of good football left. I just feel like Dallas gives you a – Gives you a more explosive option at that tight end position. Yeah, the um, the the touchdown that was called back mm -hmm. with Goddard. You see how many? Did you see? Like he had a touchdown that was called back. He literally drugged two people in the end zone. <laughs> yeah. And he and he runs out to the catch. Well, he does everything that you want. The kid just needs more opportunities, yeah. right? He just needs to sh be able to shine a little bit more. And we talked about this, right? Because um, Ertz does not block as well as Dallas does. Yeah. So therefore, by default, like you just said, Ertz is going to go out on more passes than he should go out on because of that reason. And Dallas is going to be subject to doing what he's, 
he's actually being penalized for being good at both at things. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But and that's how it is sometimes in the National Football League. A guy is so good at something, it's like, man, if I move him, um, it makes us worse in this area. But I can put this guy and, you know, it's not that bad. You know, so he's too, he's too good at blocking um, sometimes. And uh, so he needs to start missing a few blocks. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> Let me stop talking like that. But no, um, you know, I, I would love to see him get more opportunities. However, I understand what the Eagles are doing now. Mm -hmm. So let's look at it from a different perspective. I'm looking at from I'm looking at it from okay, you just pay this man some money. Let's get him more more opportunities. Dallas got it, and his his talent and his yards after the catch, just his natural ability. I want to see more from him. Yeah. Me too. From the Eagles' perspective, they're saying our receivers are young. We need as much veteran, savvy, technique, craftiness as we can, wisdom as we can, in order to help our young quarterback out. If you're looking at it from that approach, okay. I understand. But if this approach is anything else but that, I, I have nothing for you. But for, but I understand from that that saying, okay, I got I got Zach here. Who needs to yeah. be solid, and I need I have Dallas who needs to be solid. They have the most experience as the pass catchers, both of them two combined. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So, That's so from that perspective, <laughs> I see why they may um, have value in Zach Ertz, along with what he's done in the past, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, fair. So, I mean, I I follow you there. I, I get that part of it, and I I hadn't really um, thought about it that way. But, yeah. Man. Yeah, you want to see you want to you want to see the other guy shine a little bit. You want to yeah. see him shine. Um, heavy pass, we pass in a bunch. It's not. It's only so many times like when you when you pass, you're going to put the ball in harm's way. Even saw Patrick Mahomes throw an interception, interception to Eric Wilson because you pass it so much, you're going to put the ball in harm's way a few times. Now, now Jalen put the ball in the harm's way a, a, a number of times. Did they come down with it? No, but they. He put the ball in harm's way a few times. Um, I want to talk about. I want to talk about uh, the play before half, and to me, this is like where Jalen is. There was a play before half. It was a third and six, I believe, and the Chiefs called a pressure, called a blitz. Mm -hmm. Jalen did not see the blitz, though the blitz was right in front of him. And that lets me know that it's going to take us a little bit of time for him to recognize the defenses because there can't be a time where, where a blitz is coming to your, your throwing arm and you not see it at all. I can yeah. see it coming from your blind side, but the blitz came right from the middle right from the, the 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 right side of the quarterbacks, you know, on the right side of, of the quarterback's arm. And you can see the blitz from the TV copy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But he didn't recognize that, 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 oh, my guys are not in position in order to pick this up, which also lets me know is that Jalen is not responsible for calling out the mic. Oh, no, that's definitely Kelsey. That's right. gotta be yeah, this. this. You, 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 you get what I mean? And, and for mm -hmm. those that, for those that don't, um, know what we're talking about when the offensive line and the quarterback is calling out the mic. You hear Peyton Manning in his famous real Mike 45, Mike 51, Mike 97, right? It's the center point that the offense is, is designating where they're starting from. Okay. And everybody from the left or the right will have a man after that. Oh, Mike is 51. My count is one, two, three, four, so on and so forth to, to, to whatever side we need. And, when a quarterback is mature enough to call out the mic and hope the center out, therefore the quarterback is going to know the protection and know where the defense is going to come in at, right? Mm -hmm. So if the court, if there's a blitz right in the quarterback's face and he doesn't recognize that he doesn't have enough men to pick up the blitz, that's not a good sign that we are that that our quarterback is able to call out the mic and know when he's hot or not, know when mm -hmm. he's a, has a play or not, right? He was surprised that the guys came through. Mm -hmm. that it shouldn't be. It was right in front of your face, right? So um, <clears throat> I think that play kind of showed me where we are as 
where he is as as a quarterback. I'm not saying it's a bad place, but it's a place that we definitely have to grow. Yeah, yeah. And and he'll he'll eventually he'll pick that up. You know, you hope that he's 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 watching the tape and he's you know going back and studying and and getting with getting with Kelsey and, and O line and and working through those things. And those are things that that come you know with time. And so, you know, which what, what you really want to see is okay, next game, the progression, right? You want to see mm-hmm. next game if he is starting to see, you know, where pressure's coming from and, and calling out the mic and all that stuff. And it's gonna take it's gonna take a little bit of time to get there. Yeah. I'm not trying to make excuses for him, but you know, I it's he's young. It's it's young. He's young. And this is listen, this defense is is very good, even though I think the scheme wise, this defense is very good in the sense that it makes the, it puts a lot of pressure on. I'm talking about the Chiefs scheme. It puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback and makes them or the O line, and it, it makes them have to play perfect on every single play. You have to think and you have to be perfect on every single play, especially when they have a pressure. And so that's what I think the Chiefs did well. And so hopefully, you know, they, this is a good learning experience for them and for for uh, Hurts, and hopefully he you know, progresses from yeah. that. Right now, Q, over the last two games, he has to do better with pressures yes. because people are going to light him up because <laughs> they are, because he hadn't he hadn't performed the best with pressure unless the ball is, unless the, the offensive coordinator is taking the ball out of his hand mm-hmm. immediately at the line of scrimmage, right? So mm-hmm. if there's a pressure and, he, and, and it's a design play where the ball can get out of his hand right away, we're good, but the offensive coordinator is manufacturing that. Is not the quarterback. Yeah. So as of as of right now, us as Eagles fans, you can expect a lot more pressure because even in the in the Chiefs game, when he, when Jalen made a few mistakes, is because of pressure. Mm-hmm. When he looked uncomfortable, because of pressure. In the Cowboys game, we they ate him alive with pressure, right? Yeah. So when you see, when you show your you can be rattled. It comes in bunches, mm-hmm. and I thought Spags helped them out a bunch because Spags were, was reluctant to. He was he was situationally pressuring. He wasn't yeah. pressuring a bunch. Yeah, you know he You're wasn't right. he wasn't he wasn't Ty Bowles where it was 50, 60 percent <laughs> of the time. But there's going to be some defense coordinators that that were coming up, and you may see it from Carolina who got a very good defense. Right, mm-hmm. were pressured. They was pressuring the Cowboys, so they'll pressure us. Oh yeah, yeah. You know so. Um, <laughs> so we can expect that. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go on the defense, Q. Uh, no, me, before I hold on. on. What did yeah. you say? Yeah, let me get this, let me get this read in real quick. Wait, oh, okay. No, yeah. No, no, no. Before, got, yeah, before, yeah, before, yeah. before 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 you get the read in, yeah. let's talk about let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Before we get the read in, let's talk about receiver play. Okay. Because I want to talk about this. Because because we gotta give them a little bit of props. Devontae Smith. Yeah. Devontae Smith bounced back with a very, very good game. Um this past this past game. Devontae Smith, um, seven for 122, 17 yards. He didn't score a touchdown. He should have had a touchdown, got pushed out. Wait, wait, routes, got to stay away from the sideline, those things. Um, yeah. same thing we talked about, Jalen Rager. Just 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 getting pushed wider than he should. Um, but overall, had a, a very, very good game. Now, I don't – I think it's because it was the um, – now, he's a talented player, and he was getting open, you know, um, versus man. But the Chiefs doesn't have a bunch of guys that can cover anybody. Yeah. They just don't. Yeah, their secondary is not – I mean, it's – Their, their secondary is not the, 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 the greatest. Um, but, but we definitely have some teams that are coming down that line that got some people that can play. Right. Yeah. So, but it was a good step in the right direction to Devontae Smith. I thought the receivers overall um, showed up. A lot of them was toward the line of scrimmage with Quez and Jalen. And um, G Ward had an opportunity, but he did catch one late in the game um, in zero blitz. He caught a post. Um, mm-hmm. And JJ Ortega Whiteside is embracing his role. He's showing up on special teams, called the fumble on special teams, had, yeah. had three tackles, um, and was blocking his butt off. Um, uh, out there for on, on the perimeter. Most of the times when it was a big play on the perimeter, J.J. was the one blocking. Now that's the tail that the offense has to do better with. But I thought the receivers bounced back this game and had a, a much better game 
um, at wide receiver. Um, we still got to do better getting open in our one-on-one matchups, the third downs, the critical situations. Still got to do a better job of that. Yeah, yeah, those are the ones. That that's really the the glaring thing for me is is you know when 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 you need a play, who's that guy? Like when you need something, we got to find that guy, and and it can't always be Hurts. It can't always be Goddard. It's got to come from our our receiving core, and um, you know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. They got to. They got to grow up, and they got to grow up fast. Those guys, and yeah. I. And I think they. I think they can eventually. You know, get there. It's just got to take. Sometimes it just takes that one play, right? It just takes that something to make everything kind of click and fall in place. And you know, it hasn't happened yet, but I think it's gonna. It's gonna happen soon. I, the, I have confidence. This game, this past game, we saw less targets for Jalen Rager. We yeah. saw more for, for Quez and Devontae Smith, mm-hmm. um, which I think, uh, you know, was, was, wasn't was just by happenstance. I think the coaches are starting to evaluate and starting to get – make Quez more of a priority, and I think they should. Yeah. So, um, so so I was happy to see that. I'm happy to see where the offense is trending. Yes. Um, if, if, like I said, you take away four, four – like we had four opportunities – to score touchdowns that were right at our fingertips. Um, and, and we blew four opportunities. You can't do that playing against the Chiefs. Yeah. Um, but I thought our offense played with the exception of those four opportunities as well as it can possibly play. Absolutely. So if they convert those those four into touchdowns, I think that's about as well as the offense can ever can play. Yeah. I mean, and, and <clears throat> even, even without that, I mean – and I know some of the points came late, but I mean, thirty points in the NFL game—that's that's nothing to kind of turn to your nose off, at. right? Like that's usually you score thirty points in the game, you should at least be in the game. And yeah, you know, just so happens that the offense on the other side was was executing at a high level in the red zone, and that's really the difference in this game. But I, I really don't have much of a complaint other than we didn't run the ball more and we didn't win on those four downs. And then in those critical situations, we got to find that guy that's going to make a play. But, you know, all in all, you know, you can't really fault the offense for, for um, you know, you the can't. way they play. And you can't fault Nick Sirianni. Like, right. despite yeah. – the only thing that you can say bad about Nick is that he didn't run the football enough. Yes. Uh-huh. That's it. But most – but but look, to have, to have 30 points, when you leave out another four – Another sixteen. You left another sixteen out there. Yeah. Right. That's that's at the minimum. So you left another sixteen points out there, which would have been forty six points. Right. Mm-hmm. What can you say about that? And and and, and the forty six points wasn't because of bad plays. It was yeah. because of lack of execution by the players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so besides not running the football, the game the the, the game plan was executed. He he bounced back. The offense bounced back this past week with with what they showed against the Chiefs. Now, I think it was bad. I think it was because the Chiefs has bad defense, but we'll talk about that another time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Before we get to the other side of the ball, we're going to do this DraftKings. DraftKings, read. Yeah, let's go. Okay. DraftKings Sportsbook. It's an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Has a week five offer for every football fan. Should jump on right now. New customers can bet just one dollar on any NFL game and win a hundred dollars in free bets if either team scores a point. The last zero zero tie in the NFL was in 1943, so I'd say this is a no brainer. DraftKings customers can also get skin in the game with the new same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you win. DraftKings is a safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. It's a no-brainer. All right. So l- listen, download the <clears throat> download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code ITB and just bet one dollar on any NFL game, and you win hundred dollars in free bets. If either team scores a point, that's a promo. If any if any team scores a point, that's promo code ITB this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sporting betting partner of the NFL. And you must be older than 21. You must be 21 and older um, and in Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows, Racetrack, and Casino. See DraftKings.slash 
sports book for details <laughs> gambling problem call 1-800 gambler all right so all right so 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 let's 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 unpack it <clears throat> eagles defense before we get into the eagles defense Jonathan Gannon mm. this week had some um, some comments that were kind of peculiar to me. Yeah. Right? Jonathan Gannon says patience with himself is wearing thin. Mm. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Okay. And um, he went on to say, like, just because I like something or the coaches like something, if the players can't execute it or it's not that the best thing is um, – or that, let me say that over. Just because I like something or the coaches like something, if the players can't execute it or it's not the best thing for them, throw it away. Gannon Ooh. said, the last two games, we're continuing to figure out that as we go, and we need to figure it out fast because we can't keep looking like this. I know that. So – to me, this is what that saying is, is that I can't run what I want to run mm -hmm. because our players can't execute it. So therefore, I might as well throw out, throw that stuff out and run something vanilla in order to, uh, and that we can understand and execute. So to me, it's saying that our coach, our players are not talented enough or they're not smart enough in order to 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 execute what he actually wants. That's what it's saying to me. <laughs> and or, then and then he's he also recognized that he's in the hot, on the hot seat because the defense has given up 76 points over the last two games. So that you know that for me to be for for me to be a player on this team and to hear my defensive coordinator come out and say something like that it's got to be extremely extremely uh lack for lack of a better word uh frustrating um and Defensive. that would piss that would piss me off to uh no end because number one your your job as the coach is to number one prepare your players the best that you can and and put together a scheme that works within their skill set like We've been saying from the beginning you cannot just sit this is the NFL you can't sit in the cover two all day and just expect things to just not get exposed. Um, if, if I'm a player on this defense and I and my defensive coordinator said something like that, I, I would probably go to his office and have a talk with him because, I mean, that right there is is the defensive coordinator throwing the entire uh, defense under the bus. And exactly what you said, he's basically saying either they're not good enough or they're not smart enough to be able to do what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. When you are the coach, your job is to explain and to teach exactly what you want to do. Believe it or not, a lot of people, there's a lot of football in that on that defense. There's a lot of guys that have played in a lot, a lot of different schemes. They played schemes. It in a lot of different, they've blitzed, they've covered, they play cover one, they play quarters, they play cover two, like they've played yeah. every coverage. There's nothing that you can explain to them that they don't know and they can't figure out. So I don't, I don't buy that and I don't believe that this is a hundred percent just the players. This is this is some of it's the players, some of it is scheme, and some of it is a is a is a defensive coordinator that's afraid to put his team in the position to make the plays that they that they need to make. And you can't be you can't not be afraid in NFL. You have to be able to draw up schemes and trust that your players get paid to do their job. I mean that's just that's me and, and you know <laughs> yeah. We never, and I thank God we never had a, a, a coach or a defensive coordinator when we played that would have said something like that in the media because you, you know, I mean, yeah. try saying something like that with, with Trotter or, 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 or yeah. Doc in the media, man, come on. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be some furniture moving. <laughs> the, so, so here you go. Just because I like something or the coaches like something, if the players can't execute it or it's not the best thing for them, throw it away. See. Right here, look. I don't think that he's that, that that he has ill intentions. Right. I don't think that he has that he's that he's purposely throwing people under the bus. What I am saying is is that 
I don't know what's good for the players because you only do one thing. <laughs> yeah. Let us figure out if it, if it's good for him too. We watching, we paying money, we want to go see him. You kidding me? I've seen a couple different zone defenses. I've seen about three blitzes. <laughs> Damn, I don't know if they can jump high, low, cover man to man, take a piss, nothing. I don't, I don't know nothing. I know they can play zone. <laughs> yeah, you hundred percent, man. Come on, man. Like, so listen, right put them in position, let them fail. Mm -hmm. That's it, man. But don't make excuses of why they can't, or maybe it's not good for them when we never see if they can execute it or not. And trust me, executing stuff in 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 practice against, practices against other teams or in your own practice is not the game. Players show up in the game, so whatever was done in practice, trust me, if they're a player, they'll make it right for the game. Boom. So if you've seen it in practice and it didn't work in practice, so what? Try to execute it in the game, man. Let the players play. Yep. But don't give me, don't tell me that the players make, they can't, let's throw it. Listen, I don't know what they can execute. I know that, I know sure in hell they can't execute a cover two defense all game. Mm -mm. Can't. Right? They, nope. that, has, that has Tyreek Hill with 186 yards and three touchdowns. Like, what, what, what do you have to lose? Patrick, Patrick Mahomes scores 42 points on you. He get, throws five touchdowns. What do you have to lose? Yeah. Change up the defense, man. Play some. Look, can't execute it. You got to try. You got to. You got to try. You got to. So that's why I am. Listen, scheme, to me, I think it's more scheme than personnel, yeah. right? I see a man, Fletcher Cox, getting dro driven off the ball, which I've never seen Fletcher Cox get driven off the ball like he has these last few games. And I think it's because he's in a different position where he doesn't have the autonomy to rush the passer like he had years past. And the why nine when there's no lane, no contain, I can get to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, and, and in this system, I think that he has gap responsibility. And when you have gap responsibility, it kind of holds you up a little bit. And yeah. he's still learning how to play through that. Maybe this is a system that Hargrave is used to because in Pittsburgh, this is kind of something that he has experience with. Very true. For the most part, Fletcher with Washburn, he was no lane, no contain, like, you know, I mean, you know, that type of thing in the inside. Yeah. Just best way to get to the quarterback. Same way it. with same, same way with shorts, huh? No, I was saying hit it and get it. That's hit it and what, get it, yeah. right? So you're gonna get, you're gonna see more production out of a guy like that. And I think that he's struggling with the scheme. Yes, I agree. Right? Then you start to go with the linebackers. Okay, you can't tell me that these linebackers are built for cover two. Mm -mm. No, because cover two puts more space in between the D line and the linebackers. And therefore, there's going to be a, a lineman who's bigger than our linebackers without the mentality. Linebackers don't have the smash mouth. I'm going to go and stick it up into the guard at three yards so the, so the, so the running back can only can, can make three yards and make a decision at three yards, right, where he's going horizontally. They don't have the mentality for that. So this is not the best situation for them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm paying Darius Slate 10 plus million in the back. I don't think I want to pay a guy 10 plus million to play cornerback so I can go and sit and cover two, cover four all day. Man, you speaking facts. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know. I just brought in Steven Nelson so I can figure so I can hopefully play a little bit, man. So just in case Darius Slate is over there covering somebody, they, they don't have they can just get uh, have a free catch on the next side. So I just pay him a little money so I can play man to man. Mm -hmm. I got Avante Maddox who can line up with tight ends for man to man. Yep. What I'm saying is, is that it ain't smelling, it ain't smelling right. Yeah. Some may smell it's not smelling right. Some and some so so what I'm saying is is that yes, do we have deficiencies as a team? We have deficiencies at the linebacker position. We have deficiencies at the safeties, right? We don't have we don't have the most range in the world, but they're solid. Yeah. 
right? We got deficiencies at the, you know, getting getting consistent pressure on the ends and stuff like that. We, we have all of that. Most teams do. You can't tell me five starters for the Panthers, but they're <laughs> one of the top defenses in the league. Yeah. It's executing scheme, man. We just need more variety in our scheme, and I think that's the bottom line. So, Q, I've not even talked it, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. you saying everything that, that's on my mind. Um, you know, just even <clears throat> – you gotta, you've got to be able to change up the schemes. You can't – you cannot sit in the cover too. Like, this is the thing that's crazy to me, like, even thinking about it. Now, I know you, they have some very good skilled guys over there. They have Patrick Mahomes. But, like, when you think about it, even even though there's such good players over there, why would you just sit in a cover two, like the same defense every play? Right? Why would you, why wouldn't you just at least give yourself a chance to maybe confuse them a little bit? Right? Yeah. Like, show them something that they are not expecting or show them – you know, a pressure that we haven't ran yet because we've only mm-hmm. ran like three or four, <laughs> three or four pressures all yeah. year. And so, yeah. So what if, like you said, man, so what if you get caught in the blitz? So what if you get caught in the zero pressure? At least you took a chance. And, you know, I don't know, maybe somebody will get a chance to make a play, but just, just playing it safe, you know, let's keep everything in front. That's not how you win games long term. That's not how you make it to the playoffs. That's not mm-hmm. how you, how you build a bully, right? Yeah. And, and as a first year head coach, this is the perfect opportunity and the perfect chance for you to take those opportunities to, you know, to take those chances to start to build your 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 name and your and your defense and the likening likeness of the way you designed it. So to me, if this is what his um you know first year is gonna look like, you know, Gannon's first year is gonna look like. So you you're basically telling us this is what you're gonna be. As yeah. a defensive coordinator, you're going to be a vanilla, going to be cover two. Um, you're going to put it on the players, and when they don't succeed, you're going to blame the players because it's their fault ultimately. So, like that's to me, that's what he's saying to me as a as a former player and and as a fan of the Eagles right now. This is what Gannon is is telling me as a, a defensive coordinator coordinator right now. Yeah, and until he until he starts to, you know take some more chances until he starts to play different coverages and change it up and put guys in different positions to make plays. This is what, this is what I'm going to feel. Yeah. I, <clears throat> what what else can you say yeah. besides that? Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's nuts, man. What, what, what else can you say besides that? Like Q, you have, um, do we have personnel problems? At, like I said, a linebacker position. Yeah. You, you, you have some personnel issues, right? Yeah. Guess what you need in order to play this defense that you're trying to play? There's two defenses that I remember that specialize in zone defense that were really great. I'll give you three. We're talking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yep. With one of the best linebackers in the history of football and Derek Ta- uh, and Derek um, Brooks. Derek Brooks. <laughs> right? Yep. Chicago Bears, two of the best linebackers in football, and Lance Briggs and, and Brian Urlacher. Yep. I'm talking about – and Lance Briggs doesn't get enough credit. Lance, Lance Briggs is Man, every, everywhere. That everywhere. Does beast, not get man. enough credit. I, I used to hate Lance Briggs. <laughs> he was a beast, man. Man, he was a beast. <laughs> um, the Panthers did it a couple of years ago when they, had, when they went to the Super Bowl. They, yep. were, they were based on defense. They were based – but again, Luke Keekley, Thomas, Thomas Davis. Davis, a young Shaq Thompson. Like, you know what I mean? You had you had you had like some players there. Yeah. That's when Josh Norman um stole that, all that money from Washington <laughs> by being in zone and they <laughs> thought he was man. Jay, no, we love you. We love you, folks. <laughs> he, <laughs> he stole that crazy. money, though. He, he did. stole that money. I ain't, I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad. You guys still, <laughs> they gonna give it to you. They gonna they gonna be done. Man. Still Somebody up. gonna take it. Might as well be him. Right? Might as well be me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is that for the defense that you're trying to play, you need greatness at linebacker because yeah. they have to be able to overcome. Alignment, getting up to them, and them avoiding that lineman and making a play. 
They have to be able to overcome the space in between them and a the running back. They mm -hmm. have to be able to overcome, you know, being outnumbered in the box and, and taking on more bodies, right? You you you, you need amazing linebackers yeah. in order for the scheme to work. You do. So let's and let's <laughs> go ahead. No, I mean you you need amazing linebackers. And one one of the things about the cover two, and I, I coach I coach the cover two mm -hmm. um at the high school and, and I, I don't and I'm talking, you know, I don't do a good enough job with this, right? But one of the things to me that is lost in the importance of the cover two is the cornerback play. And you have to have physical corners on the outside that yeah. are impressed that are going to beat reroute the crap and reroute those corn those receivers from the opposite team. Don't matter who they are. It doesn't matter Tyreek Hill's out there. It doesn't Don't matter as Bruce. T T O like whoever is out there, mm -hmm. your number one goal has to be reroute. And I did not see enough of the reroute. We're not Even, built, we're not built for that. We're not. Like we have yeah, D Slay is Slay not built Nelson, for that. they yeah. are not covered two corners. Right. Yeah. So maybe that could be possibly maybe what Gannon is talking about. But you know, you can still there's ways as a a corner that you can teach to reroute without necessarily being you know, a big, you know, Peanut Tillman type of cornerback. Jackson, Jackson, you know what I mean? Rondé Barber. Yeah, exactly. Josh like, Norman, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, in this, to me, in this scheme, you you need you need better linebacker play, and we need more from our cornerbacks. You cannot sit in the cover two and is expect to just play soft and, and read routes like you're in the, in the, in the man coverage or – you know, a soft cover three zone because it's, it just doesn't work that way. You have to reroute. You have to yeah. make the quarterback pull the ball, get away from his first read, and give the, that line time to get there. So, you know, yeah. it's extremely frustrating. And, and, you know, what – you know what? Steve Nelson played with a dude and, and Mike Hilton last year. I thought was amazing at it. Yeah. Um, nickel and cover yeah. two, which is another underrated position in cover two. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Because he's he's going to make a lot of plays because the ball is going most of the most of the time. The offense coordinator is designing the ball to hit where the nickel is. Yep. Right. So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, uh, we can go on and on and on about the nuances <laughs> of that, man. But whatever it is, whether it's cover, like give, give us some give us some variety. And look, yeah. and we were talking about this before the play. Before the show, when you do blitz, <laughs> when you do blitz, they look like they've been playing cover two the whole day. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I want you guys to go back and look at this play. If you guys, Eagles, Tyreek Hill's last touchdown, they called a blitz. Our nickel was seven yards wide <laughs> and seven yards away from the line of scrimmage, right? When he started his his to, to blitz, there's no way he's getting home. The receiver Tyreek Hill had a chance, enough time to do an entire circle post in the midst of a, a pressure, a deep a blitz. So what that means is is that he ran ten yards, he ran. Three yards, five, uh, uh, three steps, five yards to the corner route and caught the ball on the other side of the field near the pylon in the end zone in a blitz. Never should happen that way. Mm -mm. Ever. Our guy was free, though, but he was just seven <laughs> yards away from the quarterback. Uh. It looked like we, we, we do one thing. So the guys were lost. It's like, hold on, yeah. wait, wait. Wait, what? We're, we're not doing cover two, cover four? A little mixed cover three there? That's a, hold on, wait, what do we do? Everybody was lost back there. And I know. Oh, yeah, I know who wasn't lost was Mahomes. Mahomes. He probably Mahomes was like, all right, come on. Come yeah, on, just, Yeah, yeah, you, you're so far away from me. <laughs> I wish he had to start break dancing and got up and threw it. 
<laughs> like you dummy. Crazy, like man. how you expect to get from me get to me from 15 yards away? <laughs> oh man. So he just backpedals and he's one to the back of the end zone. Like, oh man, this is the easiest touchdown I ever get in my life. <laughs> you call that a blitz? Stop playing with me. Put people in a gap and blitz them, man. Stop playing. Real man. <laughs> Sad, and so, and God, I don't know how many times I we said it, said it, said it from the training camp. And I hate being that guy, but you know, when you don't practice it, when you don't run it in games, you don't feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. And so, the only time you you the the preseason was when you should have been taking these chances. This is when you should have been getting the tape together in game time situations to be confident enough to be able to make those calls. Don't don't you know say now that the the guys can't get it because they haven't practiced it in game situations. Yeah. And so you still won't practice it in game situations because you don't you don't feel comfortable calling it. Mm-hmm. Well, when do you when 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 will you feel comfortable calling it? Right. Yeah. If you don't call them in the games, you know, and you're not comfortable with enough in practice, then when are you going to call it? So. You know, that's that's just my thing. I'm sorry, but like, yeah, it's, I no, just don't, I feel don't like say. there's a lot there's a lot of potential in this defense. Even though we do have deficiencies, like you said, I I think that this this team should not have let 42 points, five touch, five passing touchdowns on the board with this this defense. Now I know we have a lot of deficiencies. Like I said, we're not gonna light the world on fire, mm-hmm. but I still I still believe in this defense. I still believe in this team, and I think that. If we put these guys, put the players in the opportunities and give them the chance, like let them let them go out there and do what they are paid to do. Yeah. Don't don't keep take the take the kitty gloves off. Right. Mm-hmm. They're big boys now. Like if a if a guy gets beat in the zero blitz or if a guy does the wrong step on a on a pressure or or, or in the wrong coverage, that's when you you pull out the embarrassing tape on on Monday after practice or Monday before practice in the first meeting or Tuesday, you know, Wednesday morning practice and you expose that person. But like this whole, they can't, they don't get it. We don't practice it enough. It's, it's gotta stop, man. You gotta go after these teams. This is the NFL. You gotta, you've gotta take chances. You gotta do something more than the most vanilla thing that you can do, (laughs) you know? So you gotta do something more than that. Right. This, this to me is starting to look like someone that's just not prepared. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what it's starting to look like to me. But I'm starting to feel like, yeah. what 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 I will say is this: Okay, you don't <clears> want to <throat> give up the big play. You know what Kansas City Chiefs are playing with? They're playing with dynamite, son. <laughs> they're, they're playing with explosives. Their players don't need a deep pass in order to have to have an explosive play. You give the ball to Tyreek Hill with enough space, you found out that that's the (laughs) same thing as getting a bomb dropped over your head. It's the same thing. He caught it at 10 yards, but it ended up 60 yards because it's what he's playing with. He's more talented than everybody else. So in that zone that you call, that you're trying to prevent a big play, space, which he will find, with the best quarterback in football, they will find space, and it's the same thing as the big play, man. So why not just go after him? How about that? All yeah. right, that's the last thing I, I said about that. Q. <laughs> What's up? Two good players got released this week, man. The, the last two days. And the, Eagles, the Eagles haven't done jack. <laughs> All right. Thought they would? <laughs> man, I'm trading somebody. Somebody got to go. <laughs> Some kind, some, 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 somebody getting cut. Some something happening. Something. <clears throat> Stephon Gilmore goes to the Carolina Panthers for a six-round pick. We got Six seventy-seven picks. picks next year. Mm-hmm. We got seventy-seven picks next year. We got Stephen Nelson on a one-year deal. We got draft capital. We got Derek Barnett contract we getting rid of next year. Mm. We got Brandon Graham probably next year. There's a lot of people that's off the books. Yeah. We could have made that happen. Could have made that happen. In some kind of way. We could have made the, that happen. The craziest part about it, too, is 
Gilmore is the type of corner that can play in this scheme. Dog or, or Gilmore? Scheme. Can you imagine? Like, <laughs> Dang. I know when this I is not that, 2016, oh. but still. Yeah. Perfect, like per- perfect fit right there. You know. <laughs> so I was frustrated. But I was I was more frustrated. Oh, I, I guess I still am more frustrated that we haven't seems like we're not going after Jalen Smith because um and I don't know money wise where he's at and all that stuff. And you know, if we could even pull it off, but that's who we need <laughs> right now in this scheme, right? Yeah. Jalen Smith, middle back. I, Listen. We can you we can use Jalen Smith. We yes. can use uh, there's been some stuff that's saying that he's not tough and people have been able to run the ball on him and stuff like that. Listen, all I know is when he played us, <laughs> the man looked like he was seven places at one time. <laughs> that's all I know. I don't know much about what happened in the past. All I know is when he played the Eagles, he shows <laughs> up. That's what I know. That's real. That's all I know. <laughs> But you got. I mean, are God, you yeah. shocked? I'm shocked that there's been. I, ca- I I couldn't believe that the the price for Stefan Gilmore was six was six round picks. Six and round we got pick. all and we got all those picks next year, and we do nothing. I I just don't. Maybe it was just the salary thing. They said, okay, we can't handle the salary, but I I don't know. I think it's I, possible. I don't know what's what's going on there, but starting to get a feeling that you know somebody maybe somebody's not getting callbacks. <laughs> Yeah, you know, maybe someone's interested in in uh, getting draft picks, and nobody wants to deal with them. So I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with that, but a six round pick, man. That's that's like, uh, I mean, we got how many? How many do we have? How many picks do we have? Oh actually? man, you asking the wrong one. But I know it's a <laughs> lot. I know like, it's a lot of them. It's got to be like 15, 20. It feels yeah, like it, the Eagles whatever it is. We had we had enough to be able to pull out. But anyway, yeah, you're right, man. This. So I'm, 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 I'm. Hopefully, we can pull this Jalen Smith. I'm just gonna hold out until until <laughs> I see him, until I see Adam Schefter or or um Adam Kaplan and Jeff and Jeff Moshe with the with the with the uh, inside report. Um, yeah. yeah. Sure. So where we at? Now? The um, <clears throat> we've struggled in some of these areas, and and I and I think Jalen Smith can help us. I thought Stefan Gilmore. I knew Stefan Gilmore can help us, but again, well, players like that when they're um, but he was traded. It was reported first that he was released, but he was traded. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, and and we and the Eagles and, and the Patriots have had an open relationship, so I'm sure how he's on the phone. But six round pick, I I just don't understand how that goes to. There had to be more to it than that. Maybe. There has to be. There got to be more to it than that. What I'm looking at. I think so. And yeah, yeah. I, you know, we don't know. We, we're just guessing. But yeah, I wish you could pull that one off. That'd have been nice. That'd have been great. I mean, because you figure, because then didn't Nelson play nickel, right? He played Nelson nickel. isn't Nelson started in his league as a nickel, right? So now you got three, three, three cornerbacks on the field in in situations mm-hmm. where. Now we now we talking about something. Yeah, right? let's do it. How about this? How about getting cover three, cover one on first down, <sighs> and and put them in second and long, and then now you put Alex Singleton, you put Eric Wilson, who are designed to cover people in their best light. Their best light is covering folk, not not taking on blocks or or or, or, or filtering through um, linemen. That's not their best suit. Let's. Build a defense up on first down, stop the run, get them in second and long passing situations, and now we eat. Yes, man. That right there. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> man. Come on. I know, I know, right? It makes too much sense though. I know. <laughs> that's that's why that's why it, it, it ain't it ain't working. All right, here we go. Let's read this manscape. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, manscape. Support for the Q&A show is brought to you by Manscaped, the champion of the world for men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, and they just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard it right, 4.0. 
Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code QA at manscaped.com. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. I've tried the 4.0, and I'm blown away. The craftsmanship and details are second level. Nobody wants to get hurt down there. You know what I mean. So Manscaped engineered the ultimate growing and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer as has a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces those accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. You got to be comfortable down there. Show you right. This upgraded trimmer also has multi-function on and off switch that can engage and travel lock and has a 4000K LED spotlight that can turn on and off for more precision on your shade. The new lawnmower even allowed you to customize your trim with guard length sizes one through four. How about wireless charging? Their new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction to help the battery last longer. Men, you can't use the same trimmer on your nuts and face. Nobody needs pubes in their mouth. Get your own ball hair and body trimmer with Manscaped. Make me time the best time like Jason Avant always does. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code QA at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code QA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code QA. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And your balls will thank you. <laughs> nice. Tell y'all, man. That's, y'all, that's, y'all that's, that's a funny read, man. <laughs> that's that's a funny. It, 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 it works. I'm telling you. Nice. Listen, Manscaped be having me right. <laughs> Need the line mode. <laughs> Your wife will thank you. Your wife. Or significant other. You. I don't want to assume. Thank you. you know, significant <laughs> other. There we go. All right. All right, Q. Are. Let's let's look. Let's 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 wrap this show up. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we have the three and one mm. Carolina Panthers coming here this week. Matt Rule's doing a great job. Defense is ranked really high. Sam Darnold is playing well. Robbie Anderson is showing up. Christian McCaffrey's hurt. Practice today. Did he practice today? He no, practiced today get, for the first time. Him. But he still has a hamstring. He's if it, at 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 the at the um, best, he's probably going to be limited toward the game in the game. Yeah. Um. But it's a hamstring. It's tricky, right? Um. DJ Moore. They got a. They got. They got. They got a good team coming in here. Yeah. Uh what do you think about the preview? You think how do you like the way we match up with this team? Um, <clears throat> I think I think I think it's, it's going to be a challenge. Um, they're playing at a high level right now. Um, you know, they they lost to to the Cowboys first loss of the year. They lost at, at the Cowboys home at the Cowboys Stadium. Played well. They beat they beat up on the um, Texans team that was, you know, they're 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 still trying to search and find their way. Mm-hmm. Um, beat the Saints pretty good, and so. You know, out of their their first their first few games, you know, I look at the Saints game. Um, that win is probably the the biggest win mm-hmm. um, that they've had, and um, the Saints are a little bit up and down. So I I, I think it's a winnable game. I think that um, I'm not going to say that the the Panthers are pretenders. They're certainly a, a very very good team, and they only got better when, with mm-hmm. bringing in Gilmore and that defense. <clears throat> But I think it's a game that we can we can win if we execute and, and play better in the red zone, um, and I, I do think, you know, we'll, I hate to you know keep laboring it, but we've got to start to make some plays on defense. And if we make plays on defense, if we get after the quarterback, change up the reads, 
Don't give up any big plays. <laughs> and then just make the plays on offense that are right there. Make the plays that we're supposed to make. I think we can beat this team. And yeah. I I would have said after watching after watching the Eagles game against the Cowboys, I would have said there's no way we have a chance against the Panthers either. But after seeing how the offense played and seeing that the defense's deficiencies or or things that we can get better at, and it's not necessarily a hundred percent just we we don't we aren't there. It's more you know scheme wise to me defensively. Mm -hmm. I think that we can we have a chance against this team. I think personally. What do you think, man? What do you how do you feel about yeah, this one? I like I like your comment. So I think and I think what you said at the beginning is the key, right? They beat the Jets, they mm -hmm. beat the Texans, they mm -hmm. beat the Saints, they lose to the Cowboys. What that lets me know is that this team is not as good as their record shows and indicates, yeah. right? <clears throat> now, are we, you know, a contender right now? We're not. But I think both of our teams are comparable. Yes. I think true. the Panthers and the Eagles are comparable. I don't think that they're that the Panthers are so much better than the Eagles. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I think that they've been fortunate enough to beat up on some bad teams. We know how bad the Texans are. We know how bad the Jets are. We know that the Saints are hit or miss. They look like world beaters one day. We, they don't the next. And they had them at home, right? So the, they had the Saints at home. And then they go to the <clears> Cowboys and, and get and get beat. So I think that we're on the same playing field as the Panthers. So this is a winnable game to me. Yeah. I, I don't think that you're going to face a, a team with as many weapons as you are going to face with the Kansas City Chiefs. That kind of should give you some confidence mm -hmm. going forward to be more aggressive on defense, to get out of what you can't do worse than giving up 42 points on you. <laughs> Five, five. You know how hard it is for somebody to throw five touchdowns when you pass. <laughs> it's that's hard to do. Yeah. Cause the especially when you get in the red zone, it's hard to score touchdowns in the red zone. Yeah. Passing touchdowns for sure. Mm -hmm. Now he got he got away with a few of them with an under underhand run play type thing. He got away with a few. Man, nobody Let's, hold on. Let me let this. I got I got to say this because this is one of my my favorite. <laughs> my most favorite things about the Andy Reid offense is he figures out a way to get that shovel pass in. And it seems like almost every game he figures out that when the team gets to the red zone, he figures out a way to 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 manufacture getting that shovel pass in. And he figures out a way to to get that uh, the dash pass in. Right. So yep. anytime it's third and short, fourth and short, he figures out a way to get a little dash to the flat and get that guy in the flat right mm -hmm. there. And he figures out a way it'll come from a shift. It'll come from a motion. It'll and come from uh, a, a, a tight end in the back. Like he, he figures out different ways to do it. And it's like his, his trademark play. Those are his two trademark plays. And Listen. I love how he does. That's like two. Every time I watch Andy Reid game, I'll be like, look, look, he about to do it. He's about, about to do, do it. He's about to do the shovel pass. pass right now. <laughs> I love it. You know what? You know what? With the shovel pass, we know that he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. But our coach doesn't think motion is necessary. This man can run shovel pass every game because it looks like something different before the play starts. That's <laughs> why he can do it all the time. Yep. You can't just line up and do stuff. No, you got to make it look different every time. You got to put windows on it. You got to paint it a different color. You got to tint the windows this week. You got to put a sound system in the back. It's the same car, but the wheels glow now. You put LED <laughs> lights on it. But this is what you have to do on offense, right? You got to make it different some way. Window dressing, so the defense and the defensive coordinator can't recognize the set that 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 is coming out of. That's the purpose. Yep, <laughs> I love it. Fine example, Q. Thank you for that comment because <laughs> it reminded me of 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 the silly stuff that I heard this weekend. That ain't that important. This past weekend, that ain't that promotion and stuff. Not that important. And and, and no. no. That it is important, if especially when you when you don't have that many plays, right? yeah. and then and then when you when you can go to the sideline and you just pick up an iPad like this and 
you can figure out the play that they just ran in in, in thirty seconds. I I agree with you, Q. I'm not a big fan of the iPad on the sideline where it's video. Like I'm okay if you get a snap picture. Yeah. Even then, there's so much gamesmanship with the National Football League. There's so many binoculars. There's so many people with intel about what the other team is doing. Why make it that easy where you can have freaking a film session on the sideline? That like I just I don't get that from a defensive standpoint. I, I just think that's wrong. Like I think that is you should you should be able to figure it out as a coach. You got guys up in the booth yeah. so they can have a bird's eye view of what's going on. And you still need the video on the sideline? Bring the guys back downstairs. Then. <laughs> you don't need them. <laughs> just sit them right there in front of the iPad. Yeah, just sit them, sit them out there. And sit, sit them right there in front of the iPad. Matter of fact, get a big screen, iPad. Oh, yeah, man. so I, I don't understand that. But I think this team is a front-running team, Panthers, and I think that um, their record – they they don't have a great a, a a bad schedule. Their schedule is pretty. They only have a few few winning teams on their on their schedule even remaining. So they may they may end up in the playoffs, but they're 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 on the same boat. They're in the same the same level as uh, on the same level as the Eagles. So I'm expecting the Eagles to go out and and and, uh, and play well versus this team. I'm looking forward to seeing. Hopefully McCaffrey is not playing. <laughs> that yeah. will help us out a bunch. <laughs> Jeez, don't play. Don't and um, and 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 I think that Robbie Anderson presents a problem to us that that's similar to last week. He can burn us just like Tyreek Hill can. He's not as fast as Tyreek Hill, but it's the same type of player. So you want to sit back in that zone, let him catch one short and take it to the house on you. You can do that if you want, or you can light him up. And mm-hmm. You get beat anyway. You know whatever. So um, hopefully we can get to that cue. Yeah, but that's going to conclude our show unless you got something else. No, I'm good, yeah. man. This was this was a fun show. I had a good time, and I agree 100, man. I, I think the Eagles, you know, I think they bounce back next week. It's gonna be a tough. It's gonna be a tough, uh, a tough away road, a uh, tough mm-hmm. away game. But I, I think they're up for it, and you know, it seems like they're starting to trend in the right direction, at least offensively. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. I'm getting optimistic again. I feel like I'm just kind of like on this Riding roller coaster away. ride, man, like up and down, up and down. And, well, um, let me you tell know. you what, I'm not on a roller coaster ride. It's about our defense. Yeah. 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 I'm 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 in a subway. <laughs> I'm below. I ain't on a roller coaster ride. I'm I'm below ground. Yeah. Walking next to the third rail. Oh no. That's where I am with the defense. Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they, they gain some confidence and start maybe, you know, hopefully again, it starts to believe in his guys and, and yeah. give those guys a chance to to execute and, and play. And because you got to, man, you got to believe in your guys. You got to believe in your players. You got to you got to take a chance and let them, you know, let them do what they do. Uh, last thing I'll say, um, one of my favorite coaches, he's one of the hardest, hardest nosed coaches um, to ever deal to ever deal with you've you've we've talked about on mm-hmm. the show, but John Harbaugh is one of the um, one of the coaches that I f- feel always will listen to his players and will always um, you know if I if I told him this is back when I was in special teams, but if I told him, hey coach, I think I can do this, like he'll 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 take a chance on you. And yeah. we saw it in the, in the um, the the game against I forget who the Raiders. Yeah, it was playing. the Chiefs. Chiefs, yeah, Chiefs, and yeah. Uh, he, you know, he said, "What do you feel like this? Do you feel so mm-hmm. to me like that's a, a coach? Now he's, you know, years removed, but he's a coach that believes in his players, and and that's what I think that this Eagles coaching staff needs to start doing is believe in their players and take the chance to let them earn your trust, put them right. in a position, give them a chance to earn your trust on the field. And that's all. That's all I want to see. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Hopefully, we can see that, and from the from from your mouth to God's ears, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's what we like yeah, to see, man. right? So that's going to c- conclude the Q&A show. We want to say thank you guys for, um, again, making this show a success, tuning in with us. Thanks to Jeff, to Adam, to um, Hunter, to everyone that's responsible, Josh, at, um, Inside the Birds. Make sure that you continue to submit your questions to InsideTheBirds at gmail.com. Uh, we're looking forward to see what our birds do against the Carolina Panthers this weekend. I'm excited about this game. Hopefully we can step up and get in the win column 
hopefully Jalen Hurts can play a really good game and Jonathan Gannon can surprise me and get me next um, away from the third rail. Um, but for <laughs> um, uh, the Q&A show, this is Jason Avant. That's my man, Quentin Michael. And we're going to sign out. Peace out to everyone. Good night, everybody. <laughs>